Hi, I'm Josh Olson, and you're watching Trailers from Hell. It's been said that the 70s were Hollywood's last great golden era, and that's a sentiment I completely agree with. We're going to be talking about a movie that absolutely personifies that theory, that proves it, I think, beyond any shadow of a doubt. When they say they don't make them that way anymore, they can only be talking about Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. It was Sgt. Pepper was directed by Michael Schultz, who had also done Cooley High, Car Wash, Grease Lightning, Which Way Is Up, which weirdly is a remake of a Lena Wertmuller film. Producer Robert Stigwood, uh, who had done uh, Saturday Night Fever and a couple other films, uh, came to Schultz with the idea of turning Sgt. Pepper into a movie, the great Beatles album, Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. Sure, it's a terrible, terrible, terrible idea, but the last time Stigwood had come to Schultz with an idea for a movie, it had been Greece, and Schultz thought that was a terrible idea and had turned it down. So, not trusting his instincts, he took the job. I'm sure he regrets it today. Anyway, watching this film, again, is like recovering a traumatic memory from youth. You just try to forget that it ever existed. It's inconceivable and indescribable in its awfulness. You've got George Burns and Donald Pleasant singing Beatles songs. What more do you need? I will say that Aerosmith is pretty good, though. And frankly, the Bee Gees are pretty great. If you went to see Beatlemania on Broadway and the Bee Gees were the guys playing the Beatles, you'd be in for a pretty good night. They were great singers, uh, had great harmonies. You kind of wish, though, that they'd screen tested Peter Frampton before they cast him in the lead. The poor guy cannot hold a close-up, or really, frankly, a tune. He is a terrific guitar player. But the interesting thing about Sgt. Pepper really is they don't make them like this anymore. The madness, the idiocy, and the lunacy that would allow someone to make this movie, I would argue is the same madness, idiocy, and lunacy that lets Francis Ford Coppola go off to the Philippines for two years to make a Vietnam movie based on Heart of Darkness. You don't get the good without the bad. In the 70s, we were making some of the best movies in the history of the medium, while at the same time making some of the worst. The difference between a really good studio film and a really bad studio film, though, today is so slim, you can't always tell the difference. Some movies uh, get great reviews and other movies are panned and, you know, they're just a few studio notes away from each other. I would argue that the existence of Sgt. Pepper was necessary for the 70s to be what they were. But it is a fascinating time capsule when you look at it. it it's almost as if they knew they were trying to take a picture of the 70s that we would look back on now and cringe. So much of it is quintessential 70s. Uh, Steve Martin, who one of the great comics, giving probably the worst performance in the film, uh, <laughs> to Donald Pleasance singing I Want You. And then there's a strange thing at the end where it seems like they just gathered up anybody who was slightly famous who was walking around the studio and threw them into a big sing-along at the end. I don't know what Seals and Crofts are doing in this movie, but I'm sort of weirdly glad they're in it. Carol Channing shows up, Keith Carradine. Based on the era and the kind of film it is, uh, it's kind of shocking that he's not in it. Marty Feldman is conspicuous by his absence. Apparently they approached him, but Marty was one of the few people who had a good enough sense to know this was the worst idea in the history of film and said no. Uh, it's just an indescribably bizarre film that could only have come out of Hollywood in the 70s.